Yes, John, I'm down here in the field house with Matt Maher. He's about to go on stage here in a couple of hours to do a concert for everyone here at Franciscan University. We are blessed to have him. Matt, I was wondering if you would just take a few minutes to share maybe some of your favorite memories from being involved with Student Bill Youth Conferences over the years. And I mean, I think there's just, I mean, I could write a whole book. We could write a book just called The Student Bill, you know, Moments. Um, uh, I think the first time I'd ever experienced a Student Bill Conference uh, was the very first year uh, Stupid Bowl West happened, which was, you know, in uh, Cave Creek, Arizona. It was in a small high school gymnasium. We were all jam-packed in there. I remember driving to the hotel that night and seeing a tarantula on the driveway to the hotel. It was the first time I've ever in my life. No, but uh, I remember, like, the next summer I came here uh, to the field house. Actually, it was before the field house was built. And I was with Tom Booth, and we were outside in the tent, like, pretty much right here where I think where the field house stands and uh, you know I think I remember uh, that year uh, Jim Beckman spoke okay. uh, and Father Dave Blanca was there and I just the thing that just impacted me uh, in particular that year was just uh, the, the fact of I'd never experienced anything like this growing up before in my life. I was a college student by this point, and I was involved in ministry, but I'd never been experienced to any or exposed to anything like this. And I think um, the authenticity of uh, all the speakers, I could just tell that they were willing to stake their lives on um, everything that they were proclaiming. It just really, it, it spoke volumes to me. And then, you know, obviously I think one of the charisms, one of the gifts of this conference has been, has been um, the worship. I remember the worship that night. I remember um, one night at the Steubenville West in 2004 and uh, worship time just sort of exploded and all the kids just started singing praise to God. They didn't need anybody singing. They didn't, they didn't need like somebody telling them what to sing. It was just this beautiful moment uh, of uh, just sort of spontaneous uh, worship. And um, I remember, you know, really ridiculous skits and just goofy <laughs> stuff. And one year I was out of the jungle and there was a guy in a gorilla costume. And and uh, and the last day when the gorilla was exposed, we put Tom Booth in the costume. And so all of a sudden you pull off this gorilla head and it's Tom Booth, you know. But, um, you know, there's just you know, fun, goofy stuff like that. I remember great conversations um, during you know men's and women's small group times you know guys rap sessions you know being in the bear down gymnasium at U of A campus and just seeing um, you know role models young men of God some married some you know full-time serving traveling doing ministry um, some youth ministers just up there sharing their faith and it really connecting with teenagers, really connecting with their hearts, saying, wow, there's guys who are just, they love the Lord and they're really trying to live out this Catholic faith and, you know, and their their, um, their faithful, you know, husbands and, and uh, you know, faithful fathers to their children. And it just really, it really, really spoke volumes to me. And so I think the liturgies at the conferences were just fantastic. Um, you know, uh, just dynamic, um, spirit-filled but reverent and orthodox you know and some people would say there's no way that you can get a couple thousand teenagers in an auditorium or at a gymnasium and get them all riled up and then all of a sudden crank the gears and have mass and that it's going to be perfect and yet I just so many moments of just watching like the last mass of the conference which most people would think you know it's like the last day of school nobody's going to care and everybody being so focused and so present as if their very life depended on it. And so, I mean, it's, those conferences have helped form who I am. And, uh, and I'm, I'm forever grateful. My name is Sister Mary Michael. I'm a Carmelite Sister of the Divine Heart of Jesus. And I've been coming to these conferences since the summer before my freshman year of high school. Um, yeah, I made it every year, every summer throughout high school, then entered the convent. So I missed three years during formation, but then I've been back pretty much every year. So I think this is like, the 11th or 12th one. So what's the fruit of these conferences you see? I think probably a lot like in my own life of just a realization um, that God is real, that He's present in our lives, um, and that He's worth giving everything for. Um, I think a lot of teens don't really realize that um, their everyday, you know, going to Mass, falling asleep type of experience, but this kind of awakens that realization and then they can carry that into their everyday life and back to their parishes and schools and friends. I am Becca Wilbur. Um, just spent the amazing week at LEAD. Um, 
I guess the main thing God did for me this week is give me this like brand new appreciation for the sacraments. Um, I've been really skeptical about the whole, like what segregates us from other Christianities, which is mostly tradition. And I got this Bible from Life Teen, which a bunch of programs in America are using now. And in the back of the book, it has so many references for each sacrament and verses you can read. And he just put in my heart this new understanding and this new love for the sacraments and appreciation for the Eucharist. It was wonderful. <laughs> my name is Leah Darrow. I'm a former fashion model, was on the reality TV show America's Next Top Model, and am now a Catholic speaker. And I've been here at Steubenville here in uh, Rhode Island. This is my second Steubenville. My first year, last weekend, I was at Steubenville at the university and speaking there. And like I said, this is my second weekend in Rhode Island uh, at the Steubenville conferences, and it's been really amazing. The kids are great. The youth are so energetic. They want something more. They know that they have a deeper calling and purpose in life, and they are just so open to let Christ come in and radically change them, to radically love them, and they're responding so perfectly. Hi, my name is Father Marvin Biars, and I'm a Capuchin Franciscan from Hawaii and from the Vice Province of Guam in Hawaii, actually. And this is my second time attending the Steubenville Conference, Steubenville East. And so the past two years I've been on the prayer team and I have witnessed such a, an immense amount of devotion from our teens. And one thing I've noticed from the teens who come here, they really grow spiritually and you can see the excitement in their face and, and how they worship, especially at Mass. And the lines for confessions are really long and shows how much they really want to grow closer to Christ and I think um, as, as the theme in Rooted, I think many teens are hungry and desiring to be rooted in Christ and I think that's why they come. They come because they, they, they're hungry for Christ, they're hungry, hungering for the truth and realizing how important Christ is in their life and I think as a priest it's, it's an awesome opportunity to witness to them what it means to be rooted by living out our vocation but it's also for me, I find an inspiration for me to see these things and it helps me in my vocation that to, to keep my vocation alive and to, to see the fruit of the labor that we put forth from planning these conferences and so forth. But I think one of the, the main fruits you will see is vocations and also what they bring back at the parishes. I think from what I, from what, what I know personally, I know a lot of things happen at the parishes as a result from these conferences and it's just our hope as priests that more priests come here and witness such beauty and um, such transformation going on with these teenagers so they too can help transform the teens in their own parishes as well. I loved LEAD. It was the most amazing experience of my life. I grew so much in my faith. The counselors there really pushed us to grow and it was a good thing. It was, str it was a challenge and sometimes it was hard but it's what made the weekend and you could just feel God there every second. I never felt alone because he was so, so present. My name is Vince. <laughs> and how many times have you been to our conferences? Oh, this is my fifth time. Fifth time? Fifth time. I, I keep coming back for more. I want it more and more every year. It's just amazing. It's so amazing. And the people here just like lift you. And you're just on a high all weekend, like a spiritual high. And it's just beautiful. So what do you do with that spiritual high when you go back home? I try to maintain it as much as possible, but I have my friends to keep me uh, to keep me at that high, keep me rooted. Yeah, rooted in Christ. So, but that's why I keep coming back every year, just get that high again, so I get through my year. So, what's the highlight of the conference for you? Oh, by far, Bob Rice. <laughs> by far, I just got his autograph. Check it out. Bam! Right there. God bless Bob Rice. <laughs> How amazing is that? So, by far, Bob Rice. And the music, adoration is really good too. It's going to be awesome tonight. I can't wait. I'm going to ball my eyes out. So much fun. I'm going to have the best sleep of my life. I'm going to sleep like a baby. It's going to be awesome. My name is Rachel Moon. And tell me about these youth conferences. Uh, what, what, what did they do in your life when you attended them? Basically, what happened when I attended them is that I realized that Catholic sub Jesus as well because <laughs> I grew up in a Protestant school and I never seen 
Catholics um, in a big group worship setting. And so it was new to me to have what I had learned from Protestants go together with Catholics, young Catholics. I'm Riley Duggan and my week at LEAD has been incredible. I met so many awesome people and they've become a second family to me. And the way that we all grew in our faith was amazing. Not only the way that you grew, but like watching everyone else and seeing what they were going through helped you grow more. Um, this week I learned how God can show his love and himself in many different ways. It doesn't always have to be plain in the spirit or bawling your eyes out of adoration. You can just feel it and just feel his joy in your heart. My name's Kevin. I'm from Thornhill, Ontario. I'm with the St. Joseph the Worker Parish. And uh, you know, it's been, an it's been an amazing journey so far. It's, uh, no words can explain what, what uh, we experienced yesterday. As you can see, we had so many kids over here. And you know what, they're all deserving kids and um, this is what we need. This is what all the youth need in this world. Uh, you know, Steubenville, Steubenville 2011, great day, great weekend, and I definitely recommend it to everybody. This is my second time to Steubi and I was introduced last year by my best friend Stefania who's sitting here with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi. And um, ever since then, you know, I, I wasn't really part of a youth group, so to come here and see all of these kids was just the most amazing thing for me, you know, to really see other kids that are, that mean, that really want to find that same meaning in their lives as I was always looking for. So it's good to come back. We came together, just a bunch of random people from random places, and next thing you know, we're not just friends, we are family, and the only way that can happen is through God because the awesome thing about God is he doesn't just love us incredibly much he is love you just can't wrap your mind around that but you can feel that in in this kind of thing where you just come together in Christ God does some amazing things and he brought these 43 young people together in such an amazing way at like th there are permanent friendships now. Like these will not die, I, and we're gonna keep in touch. And it's all in Christ. It's it's beautiful. There, there just there aren't words to describe how amazing God and His love are. Hey, I'm Jordana, and this is my third year coming to Stevenville. And I love Stevie because. There's something unspoken in seeing thousands of teens just fall silent um, during adoration, during mass, and you don't get that a lot back home. So it's actually really touching and uplifting for me. And I um, love the music, I love praise and worship. It just helps you quiet down and just listen to what God has to tell you. And um, this definitely for me has shaped me in my faith. And I just love God. I love God, I love Jesus so much. Praise God, praise my friends, praise church, praise youth group. It's just incredible having people around you that just all love the same thing that you do. So yeah, go Stewie. Lamar from New Orleans, Louisiana. <laughs> and uh, the first day of Franciscan Stewie Bowl has been awesome. Anointed, holy, great, Walter. fulfilling, satisfying, freeing. Walton! 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 <laughs> Walton! His name is Walton. His name really is Walton. Yeah, There's a study done recently that unless teens have a personal encounter with Jesus sometime in their teenage years, they will not be in church in their 20 and their 30 somethings. It's just they won't be there. And the fruit of the conference is uh, encouraging and drawing the teens into that personal relationship to realize who Jesus is in their life and his immense and boundless love for them. And uh, that as G when Jesus came out of the water um, from John the Baptist baptizing him, um, and the skies open and the dove came down and the voice was heard booming from heaven, behold this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I think the conference fruit is the teens hearing that in their own heart. That you are my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased.